Welcome to this important segment on a very key question that is relevant for RoboTaxi launch and our predictions of what is happening to FSD. Not in a tactical sense for June, but more in a strategic sense. And today I want to discuss what type of genius Elon Musk is. I think we all agree he is a genius, but what type of genius? We have a typology of genius and what that means for Tesla FSD. I had a lot of discussions on X with smart people and with dumb people and everyone in between on FSD, on LiDAR, why FSD is going to work or not work and how do we categorize this? And I want to go through a post I did on X that summarizes the situation very nicely. Let me do it right now and uh, understand what that all means. So here's my post. And in that post, it was a great discussion. I started to think about genius. And when people use genius, they use it very interchangeably. And they say, oh, Newton is probably a genius. Einstein for sure is a genius. Uh, and what about Elon and what does it mean to be a genius and why is this all important for predicting if Elon can solve FSD and self-driving? So before I go into the details of the typology of genius, many of you are Tesla shareholders and ask yourself, why would I listen to a topology of geniuses, to, to typology of geniuses? It's very simple. You have this debate on X where people say Tesla is a fraud. This is stupid and Elon cannot solve FSD. If his FSD has been sucking for a long time, why do you guys are so delusional to believe they can just launch RoboTaxi when Waymo and Google have failed to do it? You're stupid. You're crazy. You Tesla fanboys, right? That's one side of the equation. They say they, he doesn't even have LiDAR. Okay. And then the other side of the equation are the pro Elon fans of FSD. And they say, dude, this guy can land a rocket with chopsticks and catch it. What are you talking about? FSD is so easy. So I had to think about that argument. It's like, well, we have to be a little higher resolution than both sides. And I had to think about genius. I know Elon is some form of genius, but I also know that Elon is not able to do certain things that Einstein did or Newton did that even Nikola Tesla did. So, and I know that Einstein probably wouldn't be able to do certain things that Nikola Tesla did. And both Nikola Tesla and Einstein would not be able to do certain things that Elon does. That's for sure. But this is not one dimension. They, are, they can all do certain things. And my typology here, that is very important because you will see why in the end. You will see why this is such an important question that will help us really predict what Elon will succeed at and what Elon will fail at. And that is pure gold in terms of investment returns to understand what he can do and where he's a genius and where he's not. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. So to dive into it, what kind of genius do you even have? Well, the kind of geniuses, my typology is based on the type of problems these geniuses can solve. And there are three types of problems I would identify that are very distinct and different. And, you know, in correlation to the problems, you will have three types of geniuses. And I will reveal very soon in a second what type of genius Elon is. So these types of problems or big problems of humanity, what are these types, right? What I'm saying here is Newton, Einstein, Heisenberg, these are the physicists, the mathematicians, they are good in solving a specific type of problem, which is something that is very, very hard logically, that is very, very new logically, and that is very, very unintuitive for people. Right? It's not common sense to sit there and, you know, invent the mathematic equations that Newton developed, you know, and uh, differential equations. And if you are Einstein, it's not very intuitive to say, you know, all this matter around us and you see all the energy, actually, it's the same thing. Electricity and your building you're in, same stuff. That's not intuitive. Or if you say, if you travel really fast, the time just stops. It's like, no, that's not intuitive. It's true. It's not intuitive. In order to get there, you need a very specific type of genius that goes into the weeds. To put it mildly, Einstein was sitting there in the patent office and thinking about what happens if I jump on a ray of light and travel at the speed of light. He looked at all the math equations and he looked at that and thought about it and dreamt about it for years and years and years. And then it plucked in his little brain, E equals MC squared, bing, nuclear bombs, right? Heisenberg, same thing, the uncertainty, uh, what is it called in English? The uncertainty 
theory, right, that you cannot determine the exact place and the speed of a particle with high accuracy, the more you, it's actually wrong to say if you measure the changes, this is all stupid. Like it's just mathematically the fact that you cannot look into these micro particles and actually determine the location and the speed at the same time, uh, which is also very unintuitive. Okay. First type of problem, first type of genius. The second type of genius and second type of problem are inventors, technical geniuses, because Newton, Einstein, Heisenberg, they're all not technical geniuses. They didn't invent machines or nuclear bombs. They invented, they discovered very unintuitive, complicated math and physics equations. They discovered rules, laws of nature. Inventors like Tesla or Zuse, who invented the kind of a very important piece of the semiconductor, they invent, they invent things that didn't exist before. You can look it up, Nikola Tesla, one of the great geniuses. They invent stuff that just no one has thought about. And that's also not what Elon does, right? These people go out and say, you know what, when I connect these weird scientific discoveries that the first type of genius does, and I think about the world, I determine that it should be possible to invent a weird machine that does something crazy, like Tesla's towers, the energy towers and stuff like that. Or Zeus is like, oh, we could actually invent an electronic computer stuff like that. So it's not something anyone understands why you would even do it, but it opens up a whole new crazy thing of capabilities. Another person who probably falls into this is what? Like the inventors of the steam engine. There was no steam engine. It was not that everyone was running around like, oh, I wonder how you build a steam engine. It's like, no, they didn't know what a steam engine is. They came up with it. And that these are the, or Gutenberg. Gutenberg is another of these guys who invents the printing press. It's not that there was a printing press and he optimized it. He said, no, oh, I could actually do something that does something crazy that no one even needs right now. It would print stuff and then we can mass print and create mass media. But he didn't even think of that exactly. He's like, oh, I could just print and then it's so efficient and I would invent a completely new machine that does that. Like that is a leap of genius. Second type of problem. So not scientific discovery, but technical invention of a completely new type. And then you have the third types of geniuses, and that is Elon Musk. Uh, so I, what is like, I have to look into the history of the steam engine if he was a Musky guy or a Tesla, Nikola Tesla guy. I don't know, here I put him here. It depends like what the situation with the steam engines was. If that was a widely known problem and he made it better, or if he actually invented a steam engine the first, or the, not the first time. But. So the call these last, category of geniuses, reality engineers. The second type of genius builds on the discoveries of the first type. And the third type builds on the discoveries of the second type, very different skill sets. So the reality engineers, what they do, and that is Elon Musk, that is Ford, that is Benz, the inventor of the car, the combustion engine, Ford, the inventor of the conveyor belt and mass production of the, uh, and then Edison, of course, the light bulb and the energy systems, the electricity systems and the power plants. What people forget about Edison, he wasn't so much an inventor. He was just accumulating the inventions and built systems around it that actually solved big problems. That's the special thing about Edison. And then Steve Jobs. I was never a big fan of Steve Jobs, but the more I think about these things, he was kind of a genius because he invented the whole iPhone, the whole way to turn mobile phones into platforms that did not exist. It was a new thing. Same with the uh, iPod. So he really was a reality engineer. He has a vision of a new world that people just don't see and builds it. And Elon, of course, the supermaster in being a reality engineer. So why is this all important? Because all of these people here, Ford, Benz, Edison, Jobs, and Musk are not inventors. They're not inventing new stuff. And they would be probably not very good at it because it requires a different type of brain. And they're definitely not Einsteins and Heisenbergs. They could not do that. They could not invent some crazy new physics inside. And vice versa. Einstein could never build SpaceX. No way. And Tesla could never build Tesla, ironically. No way. Because they're tinkerers. They're doing something different. So why is this important? And what can we learn from that? It's extremely important. And here's why. When you look at SpaceX, for example, what Tesla, the EVs, nothing in SpaceX and nothing in the Tesla EVs required Einstein level discoveries. There was no question physics wise. It was clear. Elon always said, well, I do the physics. Well, why can Elon do the physics? Because it's basic physics. It's not new physics that no one has invented yet. Elon never touches this stuff because he knows he can't do it. And 
he knows the time is not ripe and he knows he has to wait for some genius to invent new physics. He's, it's not his job. Same thing, by the way, for really new inventions. If you want to build a self-landing rocket, sure, you have to tweak all kinds of stuff, but there's no thing in there that requires a fundamentally new invention. Fundamentally new inventions are not improved steering, improved chips, improved, you know, self-steering rockets. Fundamental inventions would be warp drive or something. Well, warp drive is specifically difficult because it would first require a Einstein level discovery, then a Tesla level invention, and then reality engineering into rockets. So what Elon basically wants is he's good, like Steve Jobs. He didn't need any scientific discovery. He didn't need any inventions. He had everything at his disposal, but he recombined the components of reality in a way that created a completely new reality. So these type three geniuses, they shine the most when they find something where all the key inventions have been already achieved, all the scientific discoveries needed for the new reality are already there. And then they just bring it together, which is an enormous, complicated skill, by the way, maybe the most valuable skill of all, but it's not these other two. So SpaceX, an example, in 2000, when it was found, to, or 2002, nothing was missing in the equation to build these rockets. It's just very hard and you have to do it and, you know, you have to tinker around a lot, but, you know, it's possible. Same with EVs. I mean, you could use the laptop batteries, put them all together, chain them into a chain, then you can refine the batteries, then you can do all these things. You don't need to be a type one or type two genius. So why is it so important? Well, because when it comes to FSD, I saw this guy on X, I think I responded, this was a response. He said, inventing FSD is 10 times harder than building Starship. And then another guy, uh, who is a pro Tesla person says, you're stupid, says who? That's a stupid argument, says who? And that triggered my whole thing because that is the exact question it all comes down to. Is autonomy, is FSD self-driving a type two problem? Does it require maybe even type one discoveries in AI? Spoiler alert, definitely not type one problems. You don't need to reinvent physics for it. But does it require some Tesla level genius to invent a new type of neural net that does it that just doesn't exist right now or not? Or is FSD solely a problem of tweaking and combining existing components into new systems and scaling compute, scaling data, tweaking neural nets, tuning them, maybe inventing some basic new algorithms, but nothing crazy? Or does it actually require some leap? Hey, if you want to stay ahead of capital markets and the next Tesla moves, join us in Pioneerlands. Here we track Tesla, capital opportunities, AGI disruption, and politics. It's your critical information advantage in the age of AGI. It's free and the link is in the description. Let's get back to the video. And that question is very important because if it requires a level, a type two discovery, I think we are screwed. I think Elon cannot do that and Tesla cannot do that. But if it doesn't, if it's purely something you can tweak your way inside, you know, with the existing technology, or by the way, if the discovery, the type two discover invention is needed, uh, that it comes out of the entire AI ecosystem and is in the, you know, is in the works, then we are also not screwed. So what is my take on it? Here's my surprising take. I think in 2020 or 2021, it was a type two invention. And that's why I think Elon overpromised and Elon had no path to solving FSD in 2019 or 20. There was no path. That's why it never worked. Elon was basically overpromising with no clear path, completely betting that this discovery and invention he needs or these series of inventions comes out of left field at some point. So I think Elon was wrong in the beginning, but he got a little lucky. Maybe it was more than luck. Maybe he triangulated the larger ecosystems of AI inventions. And I think in 2023, around there, something happened that unlocked their ability to do end-to-end -end neural nets. Because some people say they just had an idea and this is not that simple. They didn't just have the idea. A lot of basic inventions came together from the whole world in the AI revolution. The level of compute, the new chips, the new algorithms the know-how, the critical amount of know-how that changed something. And that's where we went from FSD 11 to 12 to 13 and see where we are at now. Now, how sure am I that I'm right 
that the type of problem FSD is, is a type three problem, not a type two. I'm not completely certain. I just have a lot of evidence that it is a type three problem. I have a lot of evidence that FSD is a problem that can be solved with existing technologies and components by tweaking them and combining them and scaling them. Why do I believe that? Two reasons. First of all, we see the incremental improvements or very non-incremental improvements from FSD 11 to 13. And second, we are in an extremely exponential development cycle of AI, which means if there is any foundational invention that is missing on an algorithmic basis or model basis, the probability that the missing piece will be invented as we speak somewhere in the world in this crazy, crazy explosion of AI is also very high. So I think we have a double safety valve here that we are actually dealing with a type three problem. And if it's a type three problem, Elon is guaranteed to solve it. If it's a type two problem, Elon is not going to solve it. But I think there's a high likelihood if there are remaining type two problems that someone else in the world is going to solve it and Tesla is going to suck it up into the company. So that's why I'm strategically very confident. If it's a true type three, clean type three problem at this point, it's just going to work like a charm. So that's my take on it. As you can tell, Tesla forces me to think about things. And I think this is actually a good categorization of, of uh, problems and geniuses. So I hope from now on, when we talk about geniuses, we can be a little more discerning. There are different types of geniuses. You can't interchange them. Each genius is only genius in their specific problem type. And it's important to understand what's going on in the brains of geniuses because it informs us what kind of problem they can actually solve. I hope that was helpful. See you very soon.